this thing on, I never really know anymore. What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here and don't let the Paul's Hardware t-shirt fool you. I am uh, in fact Jay's Two Cents, at least last time I checked. Now my last video I uploaded, I showed off my new mini ITX build with glass tubing inside of my uh, Fractal Design Define Nano S. And I showed some of the complications in doing some builds in there, some things you have to keep in mind. And one of the compromises I made to go with a longer card was going with a single 240 rad. You guys in the comments told me that that was a bad move and I made the wrong choice. And today we're gonna find out whether or not that's really the case. No pun intended, actually. The Mastercase 5 and Mastercase 5 Pro from Cooler Master combines modularity with creativity, giving you the freedom to build it your way. Make it yours by clicking the link down in the description. Now, like I said in the intro, today's video is all in response to comments and questions that were about this build on the video I put up a few days ago. Now, although this might sound like one of those things where the manufacturer or Fractal came to me and was like, oh, Jay, could you mention a few things or clarify a few things? No, that's not the case. In fact, they didn't have anything to say other than the build looks sweet, we really like it. That was it. There's never been any input from any of the manufacturers or anything when it comes to my videos. I just wanna make that clear now because I know some people are gonna be stupid enough to be like, oh, obviously the manufacturer wanted him to make this video. Not the case. Every time I say case, it's gonna be like pun intended, I guess. So the two common things I keep hearing are, Jay, you should have used a front mount radiator. And in order to make that fit, the other most common thing is, Jay, you should have used a Fury X or a Fury card or something shorter. Now the point of me putting a long card inside of this case was not to say, oh, I didn't want to use the Fury. It's to show that you could still fit a long card in there and still fit fans in the front and a big reservoir, which I chose to do. Obviously the compromise was that I couldn't fit a front mounted radiator in there anymore unless I went with something like slim fans or whatever, which was not something I was actually interested in doing. A lot of slim fans have to make up for their lack of static pressure with high RPM, and I don't really feel like doing that. Anyway, the other thing, like I said, people keep telling me is I should have gone with a Fury card because they're so short. Yes, I could have. I have one right there. That's actually a Fury X. One, I didn't have a custom water block to, uh, for it, so it wouldn't have worked in this build anyway unless I had to wait to order the block and wait for it to get here. And two, uh, I wanted to show that you could fit a long card in here because obviously if you could fit a long card, you could fit a shorter card as well. So it's kind of like showing the max fitment and then you can shrink it to size. Now a lot of people have been telling me, Jay, I'm shocked that you didn't go with a front mounted radiator, which is kind of funny because the last time I did a front mounted radiator, radiator, everyone was like, Jay, I'm shocked you did a front mounted radiator because now you're putting all that heat into the case. Obviously you just can't win around here. So anyway, here's what we are going to do today. I have overclocked my 4790K to 4.6 gigahertz. I'm also using the GTX 970 G1 Gaming, again, because it's the card I had the block already attached. I thought about putting either a Titan X or a 980 Ti in there, um, but I just didn't want to utilize that card for this build. And I thought, small build, this is a perfect, perfect uh, graphics card to fit in there. And really it came down to the fact that the card was already attached. But anyway, we are in my shop right now, and to go ahead and validate some of the testing that you're about to see, the ambient temperature right now is 75.2. Let's see if you can actually get that to focus. Ah, get in there. 75.2 degrees right here in my shop. That's Fahrenheit. And for all you Celsius users, that is 24C. So that gives you some uh, validation here as to what the ambient temps are like for the testing you're about to see. So anyway, let's go ahead and turn the camera around and let's get this in here and show you guys exactly uh, how well this is actually performing, both in CPU performance, GPU performance, and then hammering both with a single 240 millimeter radiator with a lower FPI, a lower fin uh, per inch count. It's not even the best 240 you could even put in here. All right guys, here we go. We got the, the really ghetto pointing the camera at the screen thing. So I'll eventually get that fixed you know, to where I can actually screen cap this properly. But for the time being, I, I think you guys get the idea. Okay, so we got a couple of things going on here. I've got real temp up on the left so that we can see the core temperatures. And as you can see right now with the ambient, like I showed you at uh, about 75 degrees uh, Fahrenheit or 24 C, um, we are sitting in the thirties for the idle, which should be fine. Obviously we're just talking about idle, right? And then the graphics card here is idling at 29 C. Uh, obviously this is on water. So the first thing we're gonna do here, let's, let's just go ahead and get the, the loop warmed up a bit. I am going to turn on, uh, let's do Haven. 
uh, heaven, I keep calling it haven, heaven benchmark. Um, everything is pretty much set to ultra. The anti-aliasing is at 4X and 1080p. So let's go ahead and just let that loop. Let's let the temperatures warm up for the graphics card and let's see where we max out. Now I'm not gonna sit here and let it just, you know, point the camera out there and let it go forever and ever and ever. I am just going to, I'm gonna let it go, stop the camera, and then we'll cut over to see what the results were. Cause you know, that's how you make good videos. You don't bore people by letting them just stare at a loop that goes and goes and goes and goes. All right, we'll be right back. All right, so the loop is completely stabilized. We're sitting at 45 to 46 C, depending on you know what part of the test that it's on. So let's go ahead and take a look here at the, uh, the graph. As you can see, maximum temperature for the CPU or the GPU was 47. That was just like tiny little spikes, but you can see right there, it was completely flat. It wasn't going up, it wasn't going down. Stabilized. That's what you look for when you do a temperature test. Now, don't run it for just a specific length of time. Some people like to just let tests run for, oh, 15 minutes and then that's our max temperature. No, let it run until the loop is completely equalized and the temperature is maxed out and not going any higher. However long that takes, five minutes, 10 minutes, an hour, let it go. So that's what our max temps were. You can see the temp drop down pretty fast too. We're down to 37 already. Uh, but there was a core clock, 1524. Forgot to mention that this was overclocked. <laughs> plus 170 on the core, plus 400 on the memory. Uh, power limit's at 112 and our core voltage is a plus 87 millivolts. So we are overclocked. That's obviously something important to mention. Uh, max CPU temperature. So max CPU usage was about 50%. That's pretty normal for a synthetic benchmark like that. It doesn't lose, use a lot. Um, games don't tend to use a lot of CPU either. Well, depending on the type of game. But our max CPU temperature was 59. So you can see the CPU was doing something. It wasn't just sitting there completely idle. But that brings us to the next part of the test here, which is going to be ADA 64. And we're gonna go ahead and run this thing. We're gonna stress test the heck out of the CPU, which again, as I mentioned, is indeed overclocked. And then uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna see how those temperatures do. But you can even see on the graph right there, um, that right there, that was when I started the benchmark. And you can see the temperatures equalized again. So that's important to mention. The other thing too is I also don't have the fans on the CPU uh, header ramping up unless the CPU was under load. So the, the temperatures you just saw with the graphics loop or the, the graphics card under full load was with the fans at 40% speed. So obviously we have more cooling headroom in there as well. So now we're gonna let this go and we're gonna see uh, how it does. All right, so there's no point in letting the CPU test go for very long. The CPU actually puts out less heat than the GPU and it doesn't take as long to equalize. So you can see by the chart right here, this was the GPU test. And you can see the CPU wasn't under that much of a load. CPU under 100% load, we're plateaued. The coolant's not getting any hotter. And you can see here are the core temps right here on the left. This program's called Real Temp. I like to use this for the cores. So we are sitting you know, a long way from TJ Maxx. And you can see TJ Maxx is where the thermal, thermal throttling is gonna happen. These are, this right here on the bottom, underneath the core temperature is how far we have till we thermal throttle. So we've got so much headroom, it's not even funny, but that's at 4.6 gigahertz. It's not too far of an overclock. Um, but anyway, like I said, the amount of voltage it took to get 4.7 and higher stable was more than I really wanted to push. Uh, but anyway, here is that. CPU temperature is maxed at uh, 75, was as high as it went. And again, it thermal throttles at 105, so we, We've got quite a bit of headroom there. But Jay, that doesn't tell us anything because running the CPU separate and the GPU separate isn't gonna test the actual capability of the load. You need to do gaming. Well, actually I'm gonna do one better. I'm gonna run A to 64 while running the looping benchmark, which is gonna put this loop under more heat stress than any game would push this loop. And then we'll see once and for all if a single 240 was a bad move or if it was perfectly okay. I think you already know where this video is headed though. Okay, so I am going to leave Ada 64 running, and everything's still overclocked with the graphics card, as you can see. Everything is still overclocked with the CPU, as you can see. Nothing's changed. The test is still going, no interruption. And we are now going to load the Heaven benchmark. It's gonna take a little longer to load, obviously, because the CPU is under full stress, but we are going to let both of these utilities do their thing and just hammer away at the, uh, at the loop. Yeah, that's what we're doing. That's, that's what this video is about. Hammer the loop. Don't, don't actually take a hammer to your loop though. That's, 
that's counterproductive. What I find really cool though is even with ADA64 running and the CPU being at 100% load, which you will see when we're done with the test, if you look in the top right corner up here though, the FPS really hasn't suffered that much. Um, temperature is sitting at 39C right now. Like it's gonna take time for this loop to completely, uh, you know, equalize like I talked about. But yeah, the FPS, you can see it swings up and down quite a bit when it goes to the max FPS. It's like, woo, one, between 110 and 140, just swinging up and down. But other than that, you really can't tell that the CPU is under 100% load while the benchmark is putting the GPU at 100% load. So if we were gonna have any sort of cooling issues, this would be it. I'm gonna let this run run for about 20 minutes and then we'll see what happens. Transition. All right, so we've been running for nearly 20 minutes now and we've stabilized at 47C uh, and it kind of, it hits 48 for like a split second and comes back down to 47. So let's go ahead and quit this test here. And uh, let's see, so you can see here the CPU was still running right here 100% the entire time. Um, and it's been running for 27 minutes now, as you can see right there. Um, yeah, this was when the CPU was running and then this was when the GPU was running. So you can see temps came up slightly when both were running and that GPU loop uh, was adding some heat. Max temp on the CPU was 80. So we went from 75 to 80 with the GPU running. So the GPU dumping all of its heat into the loop and only a single 240 didn't actually change all that much. The last thing worth pointing out is right here, the maximum temperatures on the cores, 75, 80, 81, and 80. Again, overclocked, and that's still about 25 Celsius away from thermal throttling. Now something else I had going here was my thermometer here, testing the air temperature leaving the radiator. And as you can see, 92 degrees, it's going down now because it's not there anymore. 92 degrees Fahrenheit or 33 degrees C is the temperature leaving the case. Now, what did we learn here today besides the fact that a lot of people really like to make comments without actually knowing anything about what they're talking about? Well, we've learned today that radiators are all rated in a watts displaced. What that means is how much heat can the radiator remove before the heat continues to exponentially climb because the radiator can't remove the heat fast enough. Well, there's a lot of factors here at play. There's fan speed, there's fan CFM, there's the static pressure, there is the ambient temperature, and then there is, of course, the radiator's rating itself. Now, most radiator manufacturers don't actually put on the box the amount of heat that a radiator can display. Some do, some don't. But a rule of thumb here, as I've said before, is I recommend at least a minimum of 120 millimeters worth of radiator at 30 millimeter thickness for each component in a loop. Now for the amount of overhead that I would usually like to see, a 240 for each component would be nice. So I would have obviously fit a second radiator in here if I could for having cooling overhead, but as you can see right now in an extreme situation with the CPU loop, uh, or the CPU at 100%, and the GPU at 100%, and only a single 240 rad, in this case the AlphaCool ST30, or the Nexus ST30, was more than enough cooling with the fans that I have on there. Now, if you live in a hot climate, and a place that gets really, really hot, let's say you were in Australia, or you were in India, or someplace that gets really hot, or Southern California as well, or the Arizona desert, you're going to want to put as much radiator as you could possibly fit. So in your case, you might have wanted to go with a smaller GPU, and then end up going with more radiators. And by smaller, I mean shorter PCB, something like a Fury X or a Fury, something like that. Uh, but when it comes to my situation here, and in this case, and the fact that it's always gonna be indoors and in air conditioning, as you can see, more than enough cooling. Now, the one thing I wanna point out too is that the ambient temperature where I am, where I did this test, actually rose five degrees Fahrenheit from when I started the test and when I finished it. Right now, we are sitting at 81.5, so six degrees, it actually went up six degrees Fahrenheit. We're at 81.5 degrees right now, ambient temp in the room. So that can account for some of the slightly hotter uh, temperatures that you saw as well. But all, all in all guys, I wanted to make this video to address the fact that no, I did not make a mistake by going with a single 240. I knew exactly what I was getting myself into because there's more at play on how cooling works than simply the size of the radiator. If you were to take a giant radiator but put shit fans on there that aren't turning and moving enough air, then it won't matter how big the radiator is. Eventually, it will start to get really hot because airflow is just as important over radiator core than the size of the radiator or even the core material itself. Anyway, if you guys wanna see more about this topic, let me know down in the comments section. Uh, hit me up on Twitter or Facebook. 
And also too, if you guys are into the car stuff, my uh, vlog channel was relaunched as a vlogs and car channel. I actually put up my first video there uh, just uh, recently. So you guys can check that out. The link is in the description. Head on over there and hit subscribe if you guys like the car stuff and then me just babbling about, you know, God knows what. I like to just get on there and be super, super stupid sometimes. And well, that's okay because I'm a super stupid guy. Obviously, because I used a single 240 rad in this build. What the heck was I thinking? Obviously, I know nothing. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get on out of here. Thanks for watching today's video. I hope this answered some questions. And as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.